Most of the Fire TV Cube reviews out there focus on the basics surrounding the device, how it works, and what it can do. But unfortunately, a lot of them fail to mention some of its biggest problems. Before getting into those, let's talk about what the Fire TV Cube really is. Quite literally, the device is Amazon's 2017 Fire TV with more storage and a built-in Echo Dot. At regular price, those two items come out to $120, exactly what the Cube costs, and can do most of the same things with your voice. However, the Cube has one benefit that could be a big deal, turning your TV on and off and controlling third-party devices. Google Home and Chromecast also allow users to turn supported TVs on and off, but the Cube shines because you can control other devices like an Xbox, PlayStation, cable boxes, and more. Last year's Fire TV and the Cube share the same exact hardware specs. It does, however, include an Ethernet adapter in the box. Unfortunately, a slow one that could limit your internet speed. We already have an Echo in the room, but the Cube made it obsolete since all the requests went to the TV. Even music. If you prefer audio playing on your Echo, this could be a problem. So Amazon recommends you relocate your Echo to another room, or change its wake work. Cube's second major issue is cheap and outdated hardware based on chip architecture from 2012. Just read the reviews for last year's Fire TV, where many people complain about an overall slow and buggy experience. But in our experience, Cube's UI seemed fairly smooth, although loading apps was a bit slow at times. Now I know the Apple TV 4K is quite a bit more expensive than the Cube, but it's using one of the most powerful mobile chips available, the A10X, which was in last year's iPad Pro. The Apple TV 4K works so smoothly and is lightning quick. With performance like that, you know the Apple TV 4K will remain current for years, but you can't say the same for Amazon's Fire TV Cube. The Cube comes with the same old Alexa voice remote, which has almost as many 1-star ratings as 5-stars. Batteries tend to corrode or drain very quickly, and for some, it just stops working. And if you're out of warranty, that's a $30 replacement. Amazon says you don't really need the remote because you have voice controls, but navigating with the remote just takes forever. You have to constantly say, Alexa, scroll right, and that takes forever. Using the remote is a much quicker experience. On top of that, we had Alexa misunderstand our commands multiple times. We would try to search for Prime movies, but the UI would mix in shows that are only available for purchase or rent. When I watch movies, I like to turn up the volume pretty loud, and at high volumes, you have to yell at Alexa, sometimes multiple times for her to pick up your voice. Alexa. Alexa. There is an extra microphone in the cube, but in my experience, it doesn't seem any better than the other Echo devices. Overall, the voice control itself worked pretty well in our experience, so we have to give credit to Amazon for that, especially since it'll move the rest of the industry toward that direction. Visually seeing the weather and other information that Amazon gives you on the big screen is definitely a plus, and probably one of my favorite things about it, right next to the ability to turn on your TV and control all of your devices with just your voice. Amazon is currently offering the Fire TV Cube in a bundle with their Cloud Cam. So you can just ask Alexa to show the cloud cam, and it's up momentarily. However, if your TV is off, it takes about half a minute for the cam to show up, which is personally far too long for me. Once the cloud cam is up, the quality is quite good, the lag is minimal, and you get audio as well. Overall, the Fire TV Cube is a good device given the price, especially if you don't already have an Echo in the same room. Being able to request a particular show or movie, and have the Cube turn on your TV and launch whatever app is needed, and resume playback where you left off, is very convenient. And we're glad Amazon didn't leave that capability to just Amazon Prime content. We love the idea, and Alexa is much smarter and more capable than Siri. We just wish the hardware was a bit better to match the software. We'll be doing a more direct comparison to the Apple TV 4K to help you decide which streaming box is right for you, and we'll also do a long-term review to see what problems we've ran into over time. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.